Over the last couple of decades, there have been really astonishing advances in our ability to harness signals directly from the nervous system to control extracorporeal devices. And the most complex extracorporeal robot that has been controlled thus far is a robotic arm. And the idea is to restore sensory motor, you know, sort of restored in independence to people who have lost it, in this case, spinal cord injury patients. So they're, you know, paralyzed and insensate from the neck down. You can restore their ability to sort of feed themselves and, and, and take care of themselves by equipping them with these devices. For this study, we're trying to determine how best to use that signal from the brain to allow them to control a prosthetic robotic arm and hand. Um, and in addition to being able to control that arm and hand, we want to give them the ability to feel as though their own hand were touching an object when that prosthetic touches an object. Of course, when you're touching objects and you're applying forces, you don't see the forces you're applying. And so we're, all, so we're extending this work by, actual, by applying electrodes in the somatosensory cortex to electrically stimulate that area to provide the patient with artificial touch perception. So Scott has been a very enthusiastic participant. We had not previously worked with anybody that could still walk. It's unusual after a high level spinal cord injury for somebody to have paralyzed hands but still be able to walk. So Scott was a slightly unique case. I broke my neck in 1985 and I was told I was going to be quadriplegic when I woke up. When they told me that, I knew it wasn't going to be that way. And I figured no matter how bad I was going to turn out, that I'd always figure out a new way to do things. My sister's perennial garden is now my perennial garden officially. That's one of my favorite things to do. I also very much love fishing. My brother and I and I always go fishing, so. But I make sure that every day that I wake up, I get up and I start doing something. I don't, I don't like sitting around a whole lot. Being a part of this research is like a dream for me because now I get to be part of a team and help maybe help out more people that don't have the same opportunities that I've had. A lot of people who are interested in research are understandably hesitant about undergoing an elective brain surgery. This is a surgery that will in no way improve their condition currently. We hope that by doing these surgeries, we will one day develop a device that can improve life for people like this um, long-term, but uh, these participants have no day-to-day -day improvement in their, in their life from the surgery. The surgery is highly complex and involved uh, predominantly a very precise surgical targeting, which is based on what's called functional MRI, which means that the patient is in the MRI scanner asked to imagine a movement and then using physiological techniques, we could pin down on the brain scanner where this movement is located in the brain. We use this to plan the surgery did the craniotomy, the opening of the skull, and placed the uh, hundreds of electrodes precisely in that area, which we've defined before that on the MRI scanner. Um, the study has been going great so far. Scott is performing um, a couple of different types of tasks. One type of task is what we call a motor task. So this is him thinking about moving his own arm and hand, uh, and instead moving this virtual robotic arm and hand that we have for him. Um, and he can do a variety of different tasks, so different, you know, reaching and positioning the hand in space, grasping and moving objects, um, and even also grasping objects with varying amounts of force. These are some of the tasks that he does regularly. The other type of task he does is a sensory task. Uh, these tasks involve us stimulating back into his brain, and he reports what the sensations feel like, how strong they are, what types of, um, whether they're tingly or feel like pressure, those kinds of things. Um, and we're using this to figure out exactly how we can change the way that we stimulate the brain in order to change the evoked sensation um, and try to make things feel more as though his hand is, is touching a natural object. You know, I have good days, I have bad days. There's definitely way more good days. And I know every day that I struggle a little bit, the next two or three days I usually rack really good. So I, I really like the, uh, the testing every day. He can control a robotic arm to move in space, he can orient the wrist and he can grasp an object. Um, he can grasp objects with varying amounts of force, which is a, a newer avenue of study for us. Scott has also been receiving great uh, responses from the stimulation in the brain. So we were able to evoke sensations across the first four fingers. So that's the thumb, the index, the middle, and the ring finger. Um, and those sensations are localized to the fingertips. And in fact, individual electrodes evoke sensations that are 
located on subsections of the fingertip, so we're getting very precise responses to our stimulation. Scott is currently working in virtual reality because that is a much easier place to have an arm interact with various objects. We can make objects appear and disappear. We can change the shapes very easily. Uh, working with a physical robotic arm is much more difficult. Uh, we have a robotic arm, um, so we expect that Scott will be controlling a robotic arm in hand, um, hopefully soon. I think about the people that have no ability to move or anything, and I know one day this study is going to make it able to give someone an opportunity to have use to, of a limb in some form or fashion. You know, we touch the people we care about, right? Um, amputees who, you know, who, who have sensitized bionic hands, who suddenly can touch their loved ones again, that I think is a powerful uh, emotional experience.